In this third exercise, we're going to look at convective and radiative heat loss from the temperature control lab. So this uh, little device that we have, uh, we're going to heat it up, and then we're going to have some temperature, uh, the heat loss, uh, the temperature is going to go down. We want to see how much of it comes from convection and how much of it comes from radiative heat transfer. I'm going to skip some of this exercise here. Uh, initially, you can go to this link right here and, and get all the source code and go through this exercise yourself if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to skip this and just add this uh, radiative term right here to the model and get it started so we can, uh, it'll take about five minutes to collect it. And during that time, we'll go through this exercise. So let me come over to the, uh, the source code that we had before when we did just the convective heat loss. And we're going to add the radiative uh, term as well to our model. Now, this is going to make it nonlinear. Uh, so what we'll need is um, go ahead and just try to connect to the TC lab. We just put in a try block. If it doesn't exist, uh, if it's not connected, then it'll allow us to just simulate. Okay, and we'll say connected equals true, except um, we'll just put a message connect to TC lab to get the data, and we'll say connected equals false. So we won't try to um, do that every time. And just as we're troubleshooting our model, uh, we don't necessarily need to connect to the TC lab. And then once we're connected and we have the simulation, then we'll connect it and get the data. Okay, so I'm going to add a couple things down here. First of all is the epsilon. That is our emissivity. And then the sigma, which is going to be the Stefan Boltzmann constant. And then I'm going to convert uh, the ambient temperature to Kelvin for the radiative heat loss. And then I'm going to add right down here, I'm going to add... Uh, the radiative uh, term where we have sigma and let me make this just a little bit bigger times epsilon times the area and then times inside this quantity is going to be the ambient temperature in Kelvin to the fourth minus the uh, this is going to be the value in Kelvin to the fourth okay and then I have uh, I'm going to add uh, this term down here to calculate the convective and radiative terms. There's my convective term. You can see that right here in my source code. And then I have the radiative term as well. So you can see I just added the 273 because this is spitting it out in Celsius. And then I'll have the loss is going to be convection plus radiation. And then the gain that I have in my energy balance is alpha times 50. So that have a step to 50% on the heater. And then I'm going to add this is a subplot here. Uh, the first one is going to be the temperature response. And I'll add the simulated temperature. And then uh, if I'm connected, then I'll add the data, which will be the measured. Okay, I'm going to add a second subplot down here. And then plot the convection term, the one that we just computed right here. I'll plot also the radiative heat transfer. And then we'll plot the total loss uh, of those two. And then we'll put the heater input, how many watts are being generated by the heater and dissipated there in the heater. OK, and then we have our heat loss. And I'll just change the legend location. So let me just start with that. We'll get this one started. and. Uh, in computing and okay and if you go to that uh, address that you had uh, it will show you the source code you can either do it with odient or with gecko either one should work okay so I'll go ahead and start this running uh, just make sure it's going to collect the data I'm pretty sure that it's going to work for the simulation okay so there we go we're starting at about 20 degrees Celsius all right, and let's go back to uh, this now where we're going to go through these exercises about thinking about radiative versus convective heat loss. Now we have, uh, you know, with this heater, we have, we're going to heat it up with uh, this term by turning on the heater, we're turning it on to 50%. And then we're going to have heat loss through these two mechanisms. We have the convective heat transfer and the radiative. So we're going to go over that in just a little bit more background here. Uh, heat transfer is primarily through radiative, convective, and conductive. We don't have any chemical molecules uh, breaking or forming. 
so we don't have any heat of um, you know that that type of heat of reaction and we don't have any fusion heat of fusion or evaporation we don't have any fluids going on so it's just primarily these three that are involved in the heat transfer and uh, you know and releasing the energy okay so the radiative heat transfer is from the motion of particles emitted as electromagnetic photons primarily as infrared radiation as you get to higher temperatures you can start uh, seeing it it'll start to glow uh, convective heat transfer it's like if you put your hand over something that's hot you can fe feel the air uh, that's just convecting up uh, you can also uh, if you put your hand to the side you can feel the radiative heat transfer uh, this thermal radiation that is um, that is transferring heat to your hand okay so let's just look at some heat transfer modes and so for each situation determine which form best describes the heat transfer so in one case we have a hair dryer okay uh, here's the hair dryer and we're going to turn it on it's going to blow hot air out and um, you know what's the best way to describe the heat transfer in this case it's going to be convection uh, the hot air is blowing over an object and the air is uh, going to be the hot air is going to be transferring energy to that object okay so then the second one we have a pan on a stove okay and we have uh, a gas flame um, and so that one uh, you know there's in natural gas um, you know there's not a lot of soot uh, so soot is the thing that gives radiative heat transfer and so it's it's primarily going to be again through convection. The hot gases are going to uh, go up and around the pan and heat up the pan uh, and the contents inside. Okay, so food now, we're going to put um, maybe an egg in the pan and cook that. Okay, so that one is going to be through conduction because the heat transfers up um, it, by convection, it um, heats up the pan and then you have uh, contact between the food that's inside the pan and the hot pan and so uh, the pan heats up by convection but the food heats up by conduction okay and then in the final case we have sunlight uh, down on the ground maybe you have an egg on the ground in Arizona I'm not sure uh, but the sun warms the ground and uh, and heats it up primarily through radiative heat transfer there's no uh, convective heat flow from the sun or conduction there's outer space that uh, blocks those so it's just going to be primarily through radiative heat transfer okay so let's go on to the next one heat transfer with increased temperature so I want to ask the question what is the relative importance of heat transfer by convection and radiation at low so we're going to start off you know below 30 degrees Celsius we started off in this case at about 20 and then when the heater gets hot maybe at 80 degrees temperature for the transistor so what tra heat transfer mode increases relatively more as the temperature increases so if we just look at these two equations here's the convective heat transfer and here's the radiative heat transfer this one is dependent on temperature to the fourth and this one is just dependent on temperature so if we just plotted you know how those are affected uh, with increased temperature this one's going to be fairly linear and then you're going to have this one be temperature to the fourth so at a certain point the radiative heat transfer is going to become more than the convective heat transfer but the rate at which they increase is uh, definitely for radiative uh, heat transfer it's more significant as the temperature increases okay so uh, radiation radiation is going to oh and it just finished okay I'm going to minimize this for just a second we'll go back um, radiative heat transfer increases relatively more at high temperature okay and we're going to actually calculate that and show uh, show the influence okay so okay so which of these factors the, um, the convective or the radiative increases only the thermal radiation so you can see heat capacity that was in our balance equation that just relates to how fast the transistor heats up 
it isn't involved in the convective or the radiative terms. Okay, the emissivity, uh, this epsilon right here, that one is only involved in thermal radiation. So we'll go ahead and check that one. Okay, the mass, again, that one's just involved in the accumulation of energy. And then the surface area, this one's a little bit tricky because you have a surface area here, and then you have a surface area here. Those could be different depending on the form factors. Um, the radiative is like how much view angle, view surface you have versus convective is going to be the total surface area. Okay, so this one is not uh, just involved in thermal radiation. So let's go on to the next question. Which of these factors increases both thermal radiation and convection? So it isn't the heat capacity or the mass. Those are just in the accumulation. Uh, this one's only for th uh, the radiative heat transfer. So in this case, it would just be the surface area. Okay, so here's our problem statement here. We want to calculate how much from radiative heat transfer and convective heat transfer. And it's the same model that we dealt with before from the, uh, from the convective one. If you look back at video two in the sequence, you'll be able to see the derivation of that model. And we're just adding this term right here, the thermal radiation. And all the parameters are similar. The one that we decreased in this case was from the convective. We're saying that the overall heat transfer coefficient now is 5 instead of 10. And then, um, uh, but the, our ambient temperature is still you know, about 23. We're going to start with this one. And as we saw, we developed, okay, and this was uh, similar to the output that we just got. So let's uh, talk about this one now. Here is our simulated one. This is our nonlinear expression between the, um, it includes the thermal radiation and we calculate how much was heat uh, was lost through convection and then also through radiative heat transfer. So you can see relatively the radiative heat transfer increases more at the final than the uh, convective heat transfer and that's because the temperature is increasing and you have a T to the fourth dependence versus here you just have a temperature dependence. So we're losing, this is how much we're losing right here, um, but the heater input is 0 0.5 watts. So you can see we're accumulating temperature, we're rising on this uh, temperature because the heater input is more than the loss. Okay, and we're gonna reach steady state when this finally reaches minus 0 0.5 watts, then the temperature won't change anymore because the, it'll be balanced in terms of the heat in and heat out. So this still has a little bit of ways to go, probably level out somewhere around 60, 65 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's it for this exercise on radiative heat transfer. I'll just bring up the new results that we got. So I ran it twice. Uh, you know, this one on the left here, you can see it started maybe right around 25, 26. Uh, and this one was a little bit colder in here, about 20 degrees Celsius. So uh, just a little bit different in terms of the plot, but it should be something similar to what you get. Okay, so um, let me just go ahead and review where we are right now and where we're going. Next one's going to be to linearize this equation. And then we're going to do some uh, graphical fit of a first order plus dead time model. And then we'll do a regression as well. And I'm just going to go back to um, the overview. So in number one, we did a step test. Number two is convective. Uh, this third one is irradiative. And then we have three more for the modeling. And then we'll get into control uh, development later where we develop a PID controller to control this system.